2 Samuel, 2 Samuel chapter 3, resuming our study in verse 23. Father, sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. <clears throat> Let's just begin reading. Let's see. Let's begin reading in verse 21 as Abner, the former commanding general of the armies of Israel, the northern kingdom, you might say, the kingdom that was ruled by Ishbosheth, the son of Saul. He came to make a deal with David, who was king in Hebron, in southern Israel. And Abner said to David, I will arise and go, and will gather all Israel to my lord the king, that they may make a league with you and that you may reign over all that your heart desires. And David sent Abner away, and he went in peace. And behold, the servants of David and Joab, and now Joab is David's commander, general, came from pursuing a troop and brought in a great spoil with them. So they had victory. But Abner was not with David in Hebron, for he had sent him away, and he was gone in peace. Then Joab and all the hosts that was with him were come. And they told Joab, saying, Abner, the son of Ner, came to the king, and he has sent him away, and he is gone in peace. Well, if I am the one who told Joab that news, I'm probably hoping that he's not holding a spear. Telling a hot-headed person like Joab some news that you know will cause him to explode is not a very safe thing to do and not a very fun thing to do. Verse 24, Then Joab came to the king and said, What have you done? Behold, Abner came to you. Why is it that you have sent him away? And he is quite gone. Joab the king's top soldier is yelling at King David. He thinks David has lost his mind. He flies off the handle because he doesn't understand what really happened with David and Abner. Job, Joab doesn't know what's going on in David's mind, so he makes a superficial judgment and considers David to be an idiot. No one should jump to the conclusion that someone is acting foolishly simply because they don't understand why they are doing what they are doing. Do a little investigating. Check it out. Maybe it's not as foolish as what you think. In verse 25, You know Abner, the son of Ner, that he came to deceive you and and, and know you're going out and coming in, and to know all that you do. <clears throat> Joab talks with such authority here, doesn't he? But he doesn't know what he's talking about. He's telling David that David's a fool because Abner came to spy and Abner came to deceive. Meanwhile, since David knows that Joab is making statements about things that he doesn't understand, Joab is the real fool. It's not good to speak with authority concerning things that we are not sure of. Do your investigating first. Do your homework first before you speak with authority on something. 26. And when Joab was come out from David, he sent messengers after Abner, which brought him again from the well of Sirah. But David knew it not. Joab goes behind this, the king's back and sends for Abner. 27. And when Abner was returned to Hebron, Joab took him aside in the gate to speak with him quietly and smote him there under the fifth rib that he died for the blood of Asael, his brother. When, when Abner killed Joab's brother, you might remember, Abner did it in self-defense. It wasn't his fault. 
But to a vengeful, bitter person like Joab, that doesn't matter. Bitterness causes people to treat others unfairly. The sin of bitterness spreads, and it causes a lot of trouble. Joab kills Abner in cold blood because of the sin of bitterness. 28. And afterward, when David heard it, he said, I and my kingdom are guiltless before the Lord forever from the blood of Abner, the son of Ner. The death of Abner means the removal of a key component in a plan to unite the northern and southern halves of Israel. That's what he was working on. And he was a key component in that. The north may pull away now that their commander has been murdered by the commanding officer in the south. And that's why David distances himself from Abner's killer. If someone keeps doing bad things, we should not make up excuses for them, and they should not expect us to cover them. There comes a point where we must distance ourselves from people like that. Verse 29. Let it rest on the head of Joab and on all his father's house, and let there not fail from the house of Joab one that has an issue or that is a leper, or that leans on a staff, or that falls on the sword, or that lacks bread. I guess other than that, there's no hard feelings. Boy, David is out of bounds here. He's praying that Joab's family will suffer for the sins of Joab. And the Bible says that the son does not share in the guilt of the father, just as the father does not share in the guilt of the son. The guilt of sin does not spread through a family like a spiritual germ. Just because something is written in the Bible doesn't mean that God agrees with it. It's written in the Bible because it's accurate. 30. So Joab and Abishai, his brother, slew Abner because he had slain their brother, Asael, at Gibeon in the battle. God says Joab murdered Abner because Abner killed his brother in battle. Well, think about that. One is murder, the other was killing. The killing was killing because it was self-defense and because it was war. The murder was murder because it was revenge. All killing cannot be lumped together and and called sin because God does not do that. 31. And David said to Joab <clears throat> and to all the people that were with him, Rend your clothes and gird you with sackcloth and mourn before Abner. And King David himself followed the bier. Joab has just been humiliated. David orders him and everyone else to publicly mourn for the man that he murdered. That is humiliation for somebody who's in charge. And David didn't care if, he, if Joab was the commander of his army or not. It's true he had influence, but influence or not, David showed Joab who was boss. And that he was going to do the right thing no matter what. And he was going to make him do the right thing or he would be in trouble. David wasn't intimidated by any man. And that's because he walked with the God. What a contrast between David and Ishbosheth, the king of the other tribes of Israel at this time. He was yellow. He was a coward. 32. And they buried Abner in Hebron. And the king lifted up his voice and wept at the grave of Abner. And all the people wept. David was a good leader because he was close enough to God to where he could make tough choices and stand firm. But David also had a tender heart. He stood by the grave of Abner and he cried. A godly man will be hard-headed when it comes to the Word of God, but they will also know how to feel sympathy. 
33. And the king lamented over Abner and said, Died Abner as a fool dies? Abner was conned. He was fooled right out of his life, and that grieved David. If we love Christ, we will hate it when people are tricked or deceived, because that sort of thing is of the devil. That's how he works. That's not how God works. 34, your hands were not bound, nor your feet put into fetters. As a man falls before wicked men, so fell you. And all the people wept again over him. Abner did not die bound and executed. He was not offended. I should say he was not offered a final meal like someone who was about to be executed. In other words, he didn't die for committing a crime. That's the point. He died as a victim of a crime. 35. And all the people came to cause David to eat meat while it was yet day. David swore, saying, So do God to me, and more also, if I taste bread or anything else, till the sun be down. And all the people took notice of it, and it pleased them. As whatsoever the king did pleased all the people. David was a decent, godly man. He did what was right. The people could count on David to do the right thing. He didn't have to be watched. That's what made him such a good leader at this time. 37. For all the people and all Israel understood that day that it was not of the king to slay Abner, the son of Ner. If David will successfully rule over all the people of Israel, including the north, then they must understand that he was against the murder of Abner, who was so popular up there. See, the most important thing we can do as Christians is stay pure. And it's also important to have and to protect our holy reputation. Because if we don't have that, we have nothing. 38. And the king said to his servants, Know you not that there is a prince and a great man fallen this day in Israel? And I am this day weak, though anointed king. And these men, the sons of Zerah, be too hard for me. The Lord shall reward the doer of evil according to his wickedness. Faith and common sense often go together. Because faith and wisdom go together. Because wisdom is the word of God. David would like to kick Joab right out of the country for killing Abner. But common sense tells him to leave Joab in charge of the army. The nation is in the early stages of coming together, so David needs stability. David needs Joab's presence, so he will leave him as commander. He'll have to trust God to judge Joab because he's not in a position to do it right now.